from Hollywood, Camel Cigarettes present the Screen Guild Players. Our stars, Loretta Young and Lou Ayer. Our play, The Dark Mirror. Our sponsor, Camel Cigarette. Experience is the best teacher. Try a camel. Let your own experience tell you why more people are smoking camels than ever before. Yes, your T-zone, T for taste and T for throat, is your true proving ground for any cigarette. Try a camel on your T-zone. See how your taste delights in Camel's rich, full flavor. How your throat gets along with Camel's cool, cool mildness. Tonight, Camel Cigarettes present the Screen Guild Players in one of the year's most gripping stories. The Dark Mirror, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Elliot and Loretta Young in the dual role of Terry Collins and her sister Ruth. The Camel Screen Guild players in The Dark Mirror. You probably read about it in the papers. All the gory details. The shattered mirror on the wall... The half-empty bottle on the table, and on the floor, face down, Mr. Frank Peralta. Peralta, face down, with a knife in his heart. How did I get mixed up in that? Well, let's say it was my fatal craving for lemon drops. It began in the lobby of the medical building. You see, I have my office there, and that morning, the girl at the magazine stand was playing an old, familiar game. Good morning, Dr. Elliot. What can I do for you this fine day? Oh, would you be good enough to show me something in the line of lemon drops? Uh, how about uh, lemon drops? Oh, splendid, splendid. I should <laughs> never have thought of that by myself. On the level, Doctor. Do you always act like this? Or is it something you uh, say? Excuse but... me, Miss Collins. Yes? I'm sorry, you'll have to come along. Come along? Where? I'm Lieutenant Stevenson, Police Department. Police de- well, What in the world are you talking about? Frank Peralta. He was murdered last night. Murdered? Stabbed to death. Through the heart. Oh, Oh, please, I, I, I... Doctor... Steady. Oh, Lieutenant, we can take her into my office. Oh. Your office? Why? Because I don't carry spirits of ammonia in my pocket. Now, come on. Of course, she doesn't look like a murderous stock, but all I can do is go by the facts. And the facts, Lieutenant? Peralta's secretary said he had a date with Miss Collins last night. And two of his neighbors have identified her. One of them saw her going into Peralta's apartment with him about 8 o'clock, and the other saw her coming out at 10.30 alone. But Miss Collins says you were at the concert in the park. Look, Doc, look, you stick to your business and I'll stick to mine. I'll have that alibi ripped apart in an hour. Lieutenant. Yeah, Frankie, you got anything? Sure did. Two witnesses willing to swear the girl was at the concert last night. Got there at 8 and stayed until after 10.30. Her alibi holds up? Maybe yes and maybe no. What kind of double talk is that? Well, I just came from her apartment, Lieutenant. And what? It just so happens, Miss Collins is twins. Twins? Then if we know which one was at Peralta's apartment... Yeah, try and find out. They won't neither of them talk. Members of the jury, we have here an extraordinary situation. One of these young women is almost certainly guilty... The other almost certainly innocent. But which one? They both refuse to testify. And since the law forbids us to charge two persons with a crime committed by one person only, I have no recourse but to instruct you for acquittal. The case is dismissed. This court is adjourned. Lock it, Perry. Lock the door. Well, sure, honey, if you say so. But it's all right now, Ruth. We're safe. Safe. Oh, you poor darling. Was it so awful? Well, it it wasn't so good. Terry, I don't even want to think about it. No, no, of course not. Terry? Yes, dear. Terry, what do you think happened? I don't know. 
I can't figure it out. I remember I did handle the knife when we first got there. I opened some magazines while he was fixing a drink. But then I put it back in its case with the scissors. That's where it was when I left. I'm positive. Oh. And then whoever did it must have worn gloves. I suppose so. But why worry about it? Why even think about it? We're out of it, Ruth. Are we, dear? Are we really? You're sure they won't bother us anymore? I'm positive. And if they do, so what? We outsmarted them once and we'll outsmart them again. Now, come on, darling. Let's fix some lunch. Look, Doc, look, all I'm saying is that's your field, twins. You must be interviewing them all the time. That's right, Lieutenant. But not for the police. Okay, okay, then let's say I'm drafting you. I still don't go for the perfect crime. I want to know which twin was capable of murder. Look, Doc, you owe it to me. You owe it to science. All right, Lieutenant. But there's just one thing. What's that? One of those twins I happen to like. No. No, I don't think so, Doctor. I don't think we'd be interested. I I don't like the idea of being a guinea pig. Some of my best friends are guinea pigs. Well, it's all very well about science and all. But we're not the usual twins, and you know it. Oh, that... Oh, look, I can promise you right here and now there'd be no reference to the trial. Oh, you might not have to ask about it. But you have other ways. You mean drugs? Well... You must have the name wrong. It's Scott Elliott, not Bela Lugosi. And my lab is at the university, not in a haunted house. But then, if you're afraid, I... Well, we have nothing to be afraid of. Well... Nothing but but snoopers. In that case... Ruth, I think we should do it. Terry. I don't think Dr. Elliott's a snooper. And we're out of a job. We could use the money. Terry, don't you mind being asked a lot of um, personal questions? Why should I, Ruth? Or why should you? Well, I... I, I... Look, suppose I run along. You can talk it over between yourselves and then call me. Oh, that might be better. Then I'm on my way. Terry, I hope you can convince her. I'll try, Doctor. We'll call you. Thanks again. Good night. Terry, do you think that was very wise? Why not? What are you afraid of, Ruth? Oh, I'm not afraid. It's just... Don't lie about it. You are afraid. You're more and more afraid every day. Why? Terry, you know very well what it is. Yes. You think I killed him. Why don't you admit it? But I don't, Terry. You know I don't. Then why are you so frightened? Terry, Terry, if they knew you were even in his apartment that night, he proposed to me, and I said yes. So why should I kill him? Oh, Terry, I know. I know you didn't do it. That's why they mustn't find out that you were there. That's the only thing I'm frightened of. You're not afraid there's something about yourself that Elliot might learn from you, Ruth? No, of course not. Or from me? No. Well, then you've got nothing to worry about. There's no need for it. Besides, he's attractive. I like him, Ruth. Doctor. Doctor Elliot. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I was sorting out these cards. <laughs> What's on your mind, Terry? Terry? Oh, only three weeks and you know which one I am. Don't we fool you anymore? Nope, not anymore. What would you say is the difference between us? I wouldn't say. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Well, which one do you like the best? Oh, you. Why? Why what? Why you say you like me best? <sighs> because that's always the answer during office hours. Oh. Now face around and let's start the Rorschach test. Ruth will be here for her test in an hour. I, I guess that's the thing I miss most. I say for ice skating, give me Nebraska, Dr. Elliot. <laughs> I'll have it delivered in the morning. <laughs> you. <laughs> Why did you leave Nebraska, Ruth? Oh, well, we... We've been living on this farm for a year, and then the farmer's wife wanted to adopt me legally. Just you, not Terry? Well, they, they couldn't afford to adopt us both. Why'd they pick you instead of Terry, do you know? No, it just happened, I suppose. Not much choice between twins, of course. But it hurt Terry's feelings, naturally, and so we decided to pull out and... Well, look here, Doctor, aren't we going to work today? <laughs> you bet. A 
brand new one today. Oh. It's called a free association test, and it's so simple that even I understand what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, if all this is to find out which one of us is the smarter, I can save you a lot of time. It's Terry. Is that official? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thanks, but I'd like to back it up with science. Huh. I'll give you some words, one at a time. You answer each word with the first word that comes to your mind. All right. Not a sentence, just a single word. Yes. And remember, the important part of the test is speed. Ready? Ready, boss. Okay. Table. A chair. Dog. A knife. River. Lake. White. Black. Mirror. Death. I mean... King. Queen. Bird. A pencil. Pencil. Ruth, how could you have been so stupid? How could you ever have let yourself say it? I don't know, Terry. I, it, it just slipped out. You really think it meant something to him? Oh, him. I'm not worried about him. Darling, it's you I'm worried about. Why? Because it shows your mind is still on that thing. That broken mirror in Frank Peralta's apartment. When the doctor said mirror and you said death, it was an absolute giveaway. You still think I had something to do with it? Terry, please. Why do you keep saying a thing like that? Why do you keep taking those sleeping pills every night? Because I can't sleep without them, of course. And why can't you? Because my nerves are still bad. What other reason could there be? Your conscience, perhaps. My conscience? About what? Maybe you're sorry that you didn't tell them all you know. Maybe that's what's troubling you, Ruth. Maybe... Maybe you're thinking you should tell them even now. Terry, stop it! You're talking nonsense! Am I? Of course you are. I hope so, Ruth. I really hope so. Because if you ever suspected me, I don't know what I'd do. I really don't. <laughs> Remember, Terry, speed is important in this test. I'm ready if you are, Professor. Fine. Here we go. Table. Chair. Moon. Star. Death. Mirror. King. Queen. Girl. Boy. Ah. Is that all? I think so. Terry, I have an idea you're not very much impressed with this stuff. <laughs> Why do you think I'm here? Well, I don't know. Maybe just humoring the old professor. That all? Hasn't it ever occurred to you that I might like seeing you? No, frankly, it hasn't. Don't you like to see me? I could hardly wait for you to get here today. Well, then. Maybe we could see each other outside the office. Oh, we will, I'm sure. When? Soon. But not till we're finished with these tests, I'm afraid. All right. But the first night after. It's a date. The very next night. Remember. I won't forget. You must know, Lieutenant, I did a lot of thinking before I called you in. Yes, Doc, I think I can guess. It's something I'd never figured on, never even dreamed of. There's only one thing I want to find out. I know. But the Rorschach test, the free association test, half a dozen others, I've checked and cross-checked until there isn't any room for doubt. Lieutenant. I'm still here, Doc. One of our young ladies is insane. Insane. Very clever. Very intelligent. But insane. In just a moment, you will hear Lou Ayers and Loretta Young in Act Two of The Dark Mirror. Directing great motion picture hits like The Dark Mirror is an old story for director Robert C. Odmack. Before his brilliant career in America started, he made many famous European pictures. Talented and widely experienced, he illustrates in this great and unusual screenplay that experience is indeed the best teacher. And experience is the best teacher in choosing the cigarette that suits you best. Smokers learned that during the wartime cigarette shortage. They smoked whatever brands they could get then. Compared those different brands in their T-zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. You know, that's the way you can judge a cigarette. By your sense of taste and the sensitivity of your throat. Well, millions of smokers' T-zones gave first honors to camels for rich, full flavor. Millions of smokers decided they like camels best for cool, cool mildness. More people are smoking camels than ever before. Experience is 
the best teacher. Try a camel yourself. And remember, cartons of camels make mighty welcome Valentine gifts. Camel Cigarettes now present Act Two of The Dark Mirror, starring Loretta Young and Lou Ayers with Wally Mayer. Of course, I was worried by what I found out. Worried and a little relieved. No question now about one thing at least. I knew it was Ruth I'd always liked. She'd relaxed a lot, too. She'd become quite friendly. So it was only natural, I guess, that a few nights later I should walk her home. Gee, I really was crazy about that boy. But Terry simply couldn't stand him. She insisted he wasn't on the level. And she was right. How'd you find out? He dated her one night and she told me about it. But the cat. <laughs> Tell me how many men have you been crazy about? Oh, that was just kid stuff. We were all of 16. Here we are, my place. Already? I wouldn't have believed it. <laughs> Isn't that your window up there? Yeah, uh-huh. I think it just closed. Does Terry always wait up for you? Oh, silly, of course not. Besides, there's no light. Well, I uh, guess I'd better go in. Ruth, do you think that when this business is over, I can call you and, well, ask for a date? You think you'll still want to? I want to very much. Do you mind? No. I like it. Ruth, you're wonderful. Well, what? Don't you like the way I kiss? Yes. I like that, too. Good night. Ruth? Terry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I tried to be quiet. It's all right. I wasn't sleeping, just lying here in bed. I had no idea it was so late. Scott walked me home when we got to talking. Talking? About what? Oh, Chicago, Ohio. When we were kids. Is that his line down memory lane? I, I don't think it was a line. Just seemed to want to talk, that's all. Nothing uh, romantic? What do you mean? Well, you like him, don't you? Yes, I like him. Does he like you? Yes, some, I imagine. Ever say anything? Oh, you know, nothing serious. Did he, uh... Did he ever kiss you? No. I'd better turn in. It's, it's pretty late. Yes. And darling, don't forget your sleeping pills. I'd like to get a good night's rest. You're absolutely sure, Doctor? You're positive? Yes, Lieutenant, I'm positive. I know the condition, and now I know the cause. I'm listening. I tried the lie detector on Terry today. Told her I couldn't keep a date I'd made with her. She tried to laugh it off. She'd have fooled me if I hadn't been watching the indicator. I didn't know you were such a Romeo. No, it's not me. I'm not important. But every time I mentioned one of Ruth's boyfriends, that needle almost jumped off the dial. And the diagnosis? She's a paranoic. No more sense of right and wrong than a two-year-old. Capable of anything. <sighs> Pretty tough on Ruthie. You're going to tell her? I suppose. But it won't be easy. But a lot safer, Doc. It's 6-2 and even that Terry's going to pop off again. You better watch yourself, too. No, I don't think I figure in this. Don't be too modest, Doc. And you better tell Ruth. All right. I'll tell her. When? Tonight, if I can. Hello. Hello. Is this Ruth? Scott? Ruth, are you alone? Uh, is Terry there? Uh, no. Why? Well, I don't want to know about this, but could I see you alone sometime tonight? Why, of course, dear. When? Tonight late, about 11. Would you come to my place? I'll leave the front door open. But, Ruth. Yes? Do be careful that Terry doesn't know. You will understand when I see you. All right, darling. Bye. Goodbye, dear. I know, that's that. After tonight, you... Yes, come in. Scott? Ruth? Well, of course it's Ruth. Do you mind? Oh, no, not at all. 
fact, I couldn't be more pleased. Well, I, I saw the light in your lab, and, and I was walking. Oh, it's so nice, Al. Would you like to join me? I'm afraid I'll have to take a rain jack on that. Oh. I have a very important conference at 11. Oh, I'm sorry. So am I. Sit down, Ruth. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you, and then I'm going to send you home. Well, Scott. Darling, Ruth. Sometimes even a psychologist finds it difficult to say things. But this is terribly important to you. I want to talk about Terry. She's sick. Terry. Sworn Terry would be here by now. Maybe you have said something to her. Scared her off. Maybe she... Come in. Darling, so this is your place. Oh, I've wondered about how you live. I apologize for its neatness, but I have no woman around to keep it messed up all the time. <laughs> Let me take your coat. Oh, no, don't bother. Cigarette? Yes, thanks. Uh, now, what was all that mysterious business on the telephone? What did you want to talk about? Something quite important. Oh? It's about Terry. Oh. You don't like Terry, do you? Well, of course I like her, but... Uh... But what? But I love you. Why? Why me and not her? That's something I'm very curious about. Why did you choose me? How can I answer that? Well, am I smarter than she is, or more attractive, or... More fun? Oh, to me, you are, of course. Oh, now, don't laugh. I'm serious. I asked you because... Well, after all, it's Terry they usually go for. But that's not true. They don't go for Terry. That's the trouble with it. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. It's, it's not an easy thing to tell you, but... You see, Terry's not well. She's sick. Sick? How? She's... Twisted inside. Something that started when you were both babies, I imagine. Some incident you've both forgotten. That's silly. There's always a natural strong rivalry between sisters. There's for twins, identical twins, it can grow into terrifying intensity. Starting with that first forgotten incident and then fed by everything else that's happened, that feeling has grown in her more and more bitter all the time. Until now, it's... it's abnormal. I've never heard such utter Nonsense? Nonsense? How about that boy in Ohio, remember? And the lawyer in Chicago and the farmer that wanted to adopt you but not her. It's the same story over and over. It was always you they preferred. That's not true. It's really well, that's not. That's why I asked you to come here tonight. I want you to persuade her to go to a doctor and put herself under his care. And I want you to get her to do it at once. And if she refuses? If you refuse, Terry. Terry? You think I'm Terry? I know you are. And if you refuse to do as I suggest, I'm afraid I shall have to tell who killed Frank Peralta and why. You can't. You don't know. I think I do. You met him first at the magazine stand. He had no idea you were twins. Then later he met Ruth when she took your place. The same thing happened all over again. You knew it that night in his apartment. You knew it was Ruth he loved. And so you made sure that if you couldn't have him, Neither would she. You couldn't prove that. What about Ruth? She wouldn't testify against me before. You think she would now? Yes, I think so. I had a talk with her tonight. I think she realizes what... Sorry. Hello? Yes, Lieutenant, I was just... What? No. Yes. Yes, we'll be right over. Lieutenant Stevenson? He's at your place. I told him I'd bring you right over. The along. apartment. What's he doing there? Ruth's dead. She killed herself. I'm sorry, Miss Collins. Terribly sorry. You can go in in just a minute. As soon as the coroner's through. How did it happen, Lieutenant? Yeah, sleeping pills, apparently. We found the empty bottle on the night table. Those awful pills. She's been taking them for weeks. Ever since. Ever since. Miss Collins, I hate to ask you now, but... Did she have any reason that you know of? Only that... That I... I can't! I can't! Miss Collins, I know it's difficult, but you'll feel better if you tell us what you know. Now, please. Well, maybe you're right, Lieutenant. 
Maybe I should. After all, she's free now. Poor darling. And I have a right to some peace, too. Of course. She was driven to it by her conscience. Because she killed him. What? That's ridiculous. At she... first she said she didn't, and I believed her. That's why I couldn't tell you before. I was the one who was at the band concert. And then later I began to notice things. Terry was sick. She was twisted inside. You mean Ruth? Of course you mean oh. Ruth. No, I mean Terry. I'm Ruth. Lieutenant, she's trying to pull a fast one. I know her as well as I know myself. I tell you, she's Terry. Can you prove it, Doctor? Prove it, certainly. All those tests I made. Yes, those tests. I was just getting to that. Those tests proved what I'd already suspected. Terry was sick. She hated me. She hated me from the bottom of her heart. Because men seem to like me better than they did her. It happened over and over again. If she weren't lying in there dead, she'd tell you so herself. Terry. Ruth. Oh, I'm so sorry, Terry. Ruth, you're all right. No! 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 Ruth, look out! It's all right, Doc. It's all right, she was fine. Doc, you're uh, not sore at the trick I played, are you? I'm not sure yet, Lieutenant. Well, I'll go along then. I got to make out my reports. Good night, Doc. Good night, Lieutenant. Ruth, dear. Yes, Carl. For the last time tonight, I'm going to be a doctor. Yes. I have a prescription for you. What? I still have that rain jacket. Let's take that walk. Oh. Stars Loretta Young and Lou Ayers will return to the Camel Screen Guild microphone in just a moment. More doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette, according to a nationwide survey. Three leading independent research organizations ask doctors in every state in America, doctors in every field of medicine. Yes, 113,597 doctors were asked what cigarette they smoked. The brand name most was Camel. <laughs> And now we couldn't ring our curtain down tonight without a final word of thanks to our stars, to Lou Ayers, and a double measure to Loretta Young for the difficult dual role which she portrayed so magnificently. Thank you, Mr. Roy. You know, this program is very close to our hearts. The Motion Picture Relief Fund and its country house are largely supported by these radio broadcasts. And so it becomes a privilege for us to appear here with the Screen Guild players. Do you have something to add to that, Lou? Yes, Loretta. Each week, the makers of camels send free, free cigarettes to the men and service men's hospitals. Among the hospitals to receive them this week are the United States Army Beaumont General Hospital, El Paso, Texas, the U.S. Naval Hospital, Mare Island, California, and Veterans Hospital, Cleveland, Ohio. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Don't forget, Monday night is always a brilliant event in the Camel Screen Guild Theater. Hollywood's greatest stars in Hollywood's greatest stories. Next Monday night, for the first time on the air, a warm and mellow story that will delight every member of the family. Johnny Come Lately, starring James Cagney as the hard-to-tame newspaper man, and Agnes Moorhead in a character you remember for a long time. Be sure to listen. The Dark Mirror was directed by Bill Lawrence, adapted for radio by Harry Cronman, with music by Wilbur Hatch and was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, now releasing Nunnally Johnson's The Senator Was Indiscreet. Loretta Young can now be seen in the Samuel Goldwyn production, The Bishop's Wife. Lou Ayers will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers production, Johnny Belinda. Listen to Bon Monroe with Colonel Stupnagel and their guests, the Jan August Trio, on the air for Camel Cigarettes every Saturday night over most of the CBS stations. This is Michael Roy in Hollywood saying good night and won't you have a camel? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>